So the technical criteria that someone should have if they're diagnosed with POTS has to meet five components. So number one, the orthostatic tachycardia. You have a normal heart rate when you're laying down that goes up by at least 30 beats per minute if you're an adult and at least 40 beats per minute if you're under the age of 18. And that has to be sustained. So it's not just like a hiccup that goes over and then comes back. The second part is that it has to be relieved with recumbency, meaning it goes up when you're upright, but then when you go back down, then it goes back to normal and the symptoms go back to normal. Third part is that there can't be orthostatic hypotension because that's its own primary problem, meaning the blood pressure has to be normalized by the increase in the heart rate. If we see that the blood pressure is dropping as well, then this falls into the category of orthostatic hypotension as the primary problem and we have to solve for the blood pressure. But this means when you're evaluating it, you have to look at the blood pressure, not just the heart rate. Or it has to be chronic, meaning it's got to last more than three months. There are plenty of other things like getting sick or flus or different things that can have this orthostatic tachycardia component, but it will kind of go away on its own naturally. The ones that we're more worried about are when they persist for a long period of time. And then the last piece is that there can't be any other primary diagnosis that's attached to it. So there can't be another cause that you can point to that's leading to the orthostatic tachycardia. For me, this part's really important because when we separate out and do the testing that looks at the different mechanisms that are causing tachycardia, a lot of times, it becomes definable as to what's causing it. There's something causing a compression in the neck, blood flows being harmed to the head. Tachycardia is the response, right? Could be that we're having changes in our respiration that causes changes in heart rate response. That's the primary cause. Could it be something where we've got an anemia? Could it be an infection? On and on and on we go. But when we look for those things first, then it keeps us from settling on this diagnosis of POTS by just quickly having you stand up, checking your heart rate and kicking you out the door with some meds and getting more focused on like, well, what is actually causing this to start with. So you got to meet those five criteria. If so, you got POTS, but more than likely we've got a mechanism underneath that that's important to look at.